What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV. Back at y'all with another one. So, undefeated, 14-0, 13 by way of knockout, British heavyweight superstar, rising contender, Daniel Dubois, according to his promoter, Frank Warren of Queensberry Promotions and CEO, that Daniel Dubois wants the showdown and the fight. He wants to pursue a showdown and a fight with once beaten British heavyweight contender, Dillian the Body Snatcher White. According to Frank Warren, he feels like, Daniel DeBose that is, that Dillian White is the WBC mandatory challenger for the winner of Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder trilogy match. And he wants to fight Dillian White as Dillian White waits for that opportunity. Daniel DeBose is too in the uh, WBC ranking system. So he has a showdown coming up and he wants to, you know, um, face off against Dillian White. He believes that it would be a huge domestic showdown, uh, all British showdown between Dillian White and Daniel DuBose. He feels like Dillian White has been campaigning and claiming that guys haven't been eager to get in the ring with him and share the square circle with him and avoid him. So Daniel DuBose said he's willing to abide his services to Dillian White. Dane DeBose has a fight coming up against uh, Eric Pfeiffer uh, August 29th. After that, he's um, more than likely going to face Joe Joyce, uh, another undefeated fellow countryman uh, in Joe Joyce, heavyweight contender. And after that, he says that he wants to face Dillian White. He says that it's only right that Dillian White faces off against him in a mega showdown since Dillian White is claiming that he fight any and everybody, so he's willing to fight him, right? And see who deserves that opportunity to fight for the WBC mandatory spot. So he wants something similar to an eliminator, according to Frank Warren, right? Frank Warren said that he reached out <clears throat> to Eddie Hearn. You know, uh, Eddie Hearn promotes uh, Dillian White, Anthony Joshua, and co-promotes Oleksandr Usyk of Matchroom Promotions, right? So he's stating that, you know, uh, he wants this fight. He wants the opportunity to face off uh, against Dillian White, right? And see who deserves that to be in that position to face the winner of Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. And, uh, you know, I would love this fight. I would love this fight, right? Um, is Dillian White willing to, you know, uh, remove himself from this uh, guaranteed spot and... Uh, equation where at 32 years of age he's never fought for one of the major sanction bodies is he willing to risk that because it's a high risk right um at number one in the wbc rankings is deontay wilder number two is olisander Usyk. and number three is luis ortiz and number four is uh andy ruiz jr and number five is oscar rivas and number six is joseph parker and number seven is daniel dubose 14 and 0 13 by way of knockout and D uh dillian white is fighting for against Alexander Povetkin next weekend, August 22nd, against Alexander Povetkin for the WBC Diamond uh, Belt, and he's already the mandatory challenger. So uh, he's he's already that in that position. Is he willing to give up that position? And Daniel DeBose is at number seven in the ranking system, or is he? You know, he has a guaranteed opportunity to fight for a world title, regardless of who the winner is between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. The problem here is Dillian White tells any and everybody that will listen that he's willing to fight face anybody. And if uh, the fight happens to get pushed back from December to February and Dillian White is fighting in August, that means Dillian White could possibly be out the ring. The fight may not take place. He may not get the winner until June. Right. So he would have been out the ring. Uh, you're talking September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Nine months. In between that, mine, that nine months, Daniel DeBolz is offering his services. So, uh, he's confident that he's going to get past Joe Joyce, and he's confident that he's going to get past Pfeiffer August 29th. Right? So he fights a week after Dillian White fights uh, Alexander Povetkin, which I feel like is going to be a hard-fought fight for Dillian White. And, and I would not be surprised if Alexander Povetkin wins the fight. Now, I'm favoring Dillian White to win the fight, but I wouldn't be surprised if Alexander Povetkin wins the fight, right? So with that said, you know, um, he's going to be in a hard-fought fight. Now, 
is he willing to give his, uh, uh, offer his services before Daniel DeBose even faces Joe Joyce? Because I'm sure that Daniel DeBose would jump, would chomp at the bit and jump at the opportunity to face Dillian White over Joe Joyce, right? There's more at stake facing Dillian White. There's more to gain facing Dillian White than Joe Joyce. Now, on the flip side of that, there's not much to gain for Dillian White fighting Daniel DuBose. Actually, there's just more to, to lose for Dillian White. He has everything to lose and nothing to gain fighting Daniel DuBose, except for respect and, um, you know, it could possibly be a big money fight, but who knows with social distancing and fans not allowed to be attending uh, live sporting events. So is there going to be money to make for Dillian White in that position, in that situation as well? There's a lot for Dillian White to think about. There's everything to gain. Of course, Daniel DuBose is going to call out Dillian White because he has everything to gain. In Dillian White's case, he has everything to lose and nothing to gain. Right? Daniel DuBose has nothing to lose and everything to gain. So is Dillian White really, truly willing to risk all of that? I highly doubt it. Right? But he is one guy that, you know, uh, continues to tell the world that he'll fight any and everybody at any given time. So is he willing to fight Daniel DuBose, a knockout artist, right in his backyard, right, for his opportunity? Now, Dylan White can always turn around and say, well, Daniel DuBose haven't earned an opportunity to face off against me. What has he done to earn to, for me to have to face him? And he would be right in saying such. But, you know, there's a lot of talk and a lot of chatter that Daniel DuBose knocked out Anthony Joshua and sparring. You know, Danny, Daniel DuBose is a blue-chip prospect, right? So... Like I said, he knocks out Joe Joyce after he knocks out Pfeiffer because I'm confident that he's going to knock out Pfeiffer. And then he knocks out Joe Joyce, he's going to make a case for himself. He's going to be hard to turn away from, to turn down, right? I favor Daniel DeVos to beat Dylan White. Six foot five, 240, 245 pound heavyweight with power in both hands. Stamina, great stamina, great jab, great boxing ability to go along with that knockout power. We've seen Dillian White hurt by lesser opponents with lesser power. So I would favor Daniel DeBose to win that fight. But Dillian White's experience is going to come into play. Dillian White has been hurt before. Dillian White has been on the canvas before. He knows how to fight back. He knows how to get back, right? But that's a huge risk. I don't think Dylan White is willing to risk it. I think at this point in time, Daniel DuBose and Frank Warren are trying to make a name for themselves. Daniel DuBose is young, hungry, looking to make a name for himself. He's only, I believe he's like 22 years of age or something like that. Dylan White is 32. So he's Dylan White is, is 10 years his senior. If Daniel DuBose is, uh, I believe he's 22 years of age. Um, but... Yeah, he's 22 years of age. He'll be 23 in September, next month, in a couple of weeks, actually, right? So he'll be 23, Dillian White will be 33. So Dillian White is 10 years his senior. You know, Dillian White has, you know, this is his opportunity. Like I said, he's been fighting in the sport of boxing for quite some time. He's 32 years old, and he's never fought for a world title. And he's had big fights. He had action-packed fights. You know, uh, Derek Sassoura fight. You know, um, the Joseph Parker fight. Oscar Rivas fight, the Anthony Joshua fight. Now, he came up short in the Anthony Joshua fight, but these were exciting fights. So it's not to say Dylan White is not in big fight, and he's had the, he has a resume that's already built up. So is he willing to risk all of that for nothing? Not to disrespect or, you know, discredit Dane DuBose, but he hasn't done anything. So for at this point in time in Dylan White's career, to risk that against Dane DuBose, I wouldn't advise it, but I would love to see this fight. And I love Daniel DuBose's approach and his attitude. But let's see how this all plays out. Because Daniel DuBose, nothing is given in the sport of boxing. So he has to get past, uh, uh, he has to get past Fifa, and then he has to get past Joe Joyce. And Dylan White has to get past Alexander Povekin. And that's no foregone conclusion that he's going to do that. So we have to see how this all plays out before we put the carriage before the horse. Especially in the sport of boxing. That's not a good thing to do. But I love Daniel DuBose's attitude, and I definitely think he's the future of the heavyweight division, right? Him and uh, 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 um, Big Baby Anderson in the future, woo, fireworks. So I can't wait to see how that plays out. 
But uh, that's all I got for y'all. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hit like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notification. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire L D B C. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.